Okay, now we've got to question number eight from the Pure Mathematics um, P4 Sample Assessment Paper International A-Level. <coughs> question here about the differential equations. Okay, water is being heated in a kettle. At time t seconds, the temperature of the water is theta degrees Celsius. The rate of increase of the temperature of the water at time t is modeled by the differential equation d theta dt equals lambda times 120 minus theta, where theta is less than or equal to 100, and where lambda is a positive constant. It says, given that theta equals 20 when t equals 0, solve this differential equation to show that theta equals 120 minus 100 e to the power of minus lambda t. Okay, so what we have to do here is we have to solve this differential equation, which is already given to us. Um, so, in solving a differential equation means to, um, if it says d theta dt, it's make theta the subject, as they've shown in what they have to, we have to show that it becomes. So, we have to make theta the subject. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down that we have to integrate. Well, first I'll write down d theta dt. I'll leave a little space there. Equals lambda times 120 minus theta. Okay, that's what we have to solve. Now, in order to solve a differential equation, what we're doing, basically, is we want to find what theta is. So we're going to integrate both sides with respect to t. Okay, I'm going to integrate both sides with respect to t. As lambda is a constant, I can write the integral here. I'm integrating both sides with respect to t. Okay, that's how you deal with differential equations. That's the starting point, okay? Um, that's when, whenever you, in fact, when you, when you, when you are, when you have something like y equals three x squared plus, um, or you have dy dx, sorry, equals three x squared plus x or something like that, and when you want to integrate that, okay, basically that's what you're doing. You are solving this differential equation. A differential equation simply means an equation that starts off with a differential in it, okay. And this is called a first order differential equation because you have a first order differential. You have dy dx or you don't have a d squared y dx squared. So dy dx equals 3x squared plus x. So when we actually um, integrate this, what we're used to writing is y equals the integral of 3x squared plus x Okay, with respect to x. That's what we're used to doing that. And then we integrate it by adding to the power and all that stuff and divided by the new power. However, what you're actually doing in reality is this. You're actually integrating, you're doing the same thing to one side that you're doing to the other. So you're integrating this side with respect to x, and you're integrating this side also with respect to x, and then basically you end up with integral of dy. It's basically integral of 1 with respect to y, it gives you y, and then you have the integral of all of this with respect to x, which will then give you 3x cubed over 3 plus x squared over 2 plus c and, and so on. Okay, so that's actually what you're doing when you're integrating, which you, you don't really think about it like that when you're doing P, P2 and P, P1. Okay, but this is actually what's happening when you're integrating. Okay, so that's what we're going to do here to solve this differential equation. I'm going to integrate both sides with respect to t. Okay, so I'm integrating this side with respect to t. The, t, the dt's here are going to cancel you left like with 1 d theta. Now, what you have to do in the next step is, on the side where it says d theta, you have to have all the variables that say theta. And the side where it says dt, you have to have all the variables that say t. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of this, and I'm going to divide both sides by 120 minus theta. So this becomes 1 over 120 minus theta, and I'm going to that's going to be integrated with respect to theta, you see, because the dt is cancelled out. On the other side, I'm left with just 1, basically. There's no t terms, right? So it's 1 dt. So I've rearranged it so that my theta ends up on the side that says d theta, and t's, if there are any other t's, they would end up on the side that says dt. That's what I'm doing here. Okay, so don't forget the lambda. The lambda is a constant, so I'm writing it outside. Okay, now... There's different ways to proceed, but I really, um, myself, I, I really prefer to do the following when I have limits, because they gave us some information to help us to find the constant of integration, okay? 
they've told on us that given they've told us sorry that when theta equals 20 t equals 0 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write here 20 I'm going to write here 0 and we want to find theta in terms of t this will help me to find the constant of integration without any hassle it will automatically come out when we do this so now let's integrate both sides according to accordingly this is this side is going to be integrated with respect to theta so you get your square bracket now when you integrate one over something okay like one over theta with respect to theta it's going to be in the form of the lin of that thing so you have lin of the modulus of 120 minus theta hold on that looks like a theta there doesn't it it's 120 okay 120 minus theta now you have to then divide by the differential of what's inside the function which is minus one if you differentiate this with respect to theta you get minus one so you divide by minus one you basically end up with minus lin 120 minus theta okay and that's between the limits of theta and 20 and on this side you're left with lambda times t because this is like one with respect to t which gives you t and you're left with your limits of t and zero so now let's put the limits in you have minus the lin of the modulus of 120 minus theta okay minus and you got minus the lin of the modulus of 120 minus 20 and on the other side you're going to have lambda times t basically because if you put zero in this can become zero okay so this gives you minus lin now that's going to be 120 minus theta now i know that theta as it tells us in the question theta is uh, less than 100 if theta is less than 100 then this is going to be a positive value so i don't need to put the modulus sign anymore because i know that theta is less than 100 in which case this will be positive and you got minus and minus which is plus the lin of 100 Okay, I don't need to put the modulus sign anymore because 100 is positive. Okay, um, and that's equal to lambda t. So I can combine these two because you've got lin of 100 minus lin of 120 minus theta. So I can write that as one term. That's like 100 divided by 120, 120 minus theta. Okay, that's combining these together, this subtraction law, so lin 100 minus lin 120 minus theta, and that's equal to lambda t. Now I can rewrite this um, in index form, because we know that, for example, the log to the base a of b equals c can be rewritten as a to the power of c equals b. This is the power, this is the, the, the base, this is the power, this is the result. So remember, lin, lin means log to the base e. That's what it means. So this is log to the base e, so the base is e, the power is lambda t, okay, and that's equal to 100 over 120 minus theta. Okay, so we have to make theta the subject. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, cross multiply. So that will give me 120 minus theta equals 100 over e to the power of lambda t. Okay, and I end up with, this will give me, um, if I make lambda the subject, it's like um, basically 120 minus 100 over e to the power of lambda t equals theta. And the final step is I can write theta, I can write the e to the power of lambda t as a numerator. So theta is equal to 100 What am I doing there? Yeah, 120 uh, minus 100 times e to the power of negative lambda t. And there is the answer to part A. And is it exactly what we were asked to show? 100 minus, 120 minus 100 e to the power of minus lambda t. Yep, that's exactly what we had to show. Okay, so there's the answer to part A. And now for part B. When the temperature of the water reaches 100 degrees Celsius, the kettle switches off. Given that lambda equals 0 0.01, find the time to the nearest second when the kettle switches off. So we, we learned that theta is equal to 120 minus 100 
times e to the power of minus lambda t. Let me just make sure of that. 120 minus 100 e to the power minus lambda t. Yes. Okay, just wanted to be sure. Now it says, given that lambda equals 0 0.01, find the time. Okay, when the temperature reaches theta, uh, when the temperature is equal to 100 degrees Celsius. Okay, the kettle switches off. Given that lambda equals 0 0.01, that's a constant. Find the time. So we got to find the time when the temperature is 100 degrees Celsius. So we got to solve this equation. So you have 100 equals 120. Oops. 1,200, 120 um, minus 100 e to the power of minus 0 0.01 t. We've got to find what t is. So we've got to solve this equation. So the first thing we'll do is I'll write 100 e to the power of minus 0 0.01 t equals, and you're going to have 120 minus 100, which is 20. Then I'll divide both sides by 100. So e to the power of minus 0 0.01 t is equal to 2 over 10, which is 1 fifth. 20 over 100, I'll just write the whole step down. That's going to give you 1 fifth. Okay, so e to the power of negative 0 0.01 t is equal to 1 over 5. And what I like to do here, because this is a negative power, I can write this as a positive power, and this becomes a 5, because you just I'm writing the reciprocal of this, and that, of course, I have to then write the reciprocal of the other side. You have one fraction on this side. Okay, so now I can take the lin of both sides, the log to the base e of both sides, in which case this side becomes 0.01t, and this becomes lin 5. Okay, I've taken the log to the base e of both sides, and then I can say t is equal to uh, lin 5 divided by 0.01t. Okay, uh, 0 0.01, sorry. I forget t. Okay. And that should give me the answer that I need. So let me take the calculator, which is over here. Yes. So you have lin5. Over 0.01. Whoops. 0.01, which gives you 160. Uh, 0.94. 3, continuing on, 160.943 dot dot dot, okay, so that gives you 160, 160.9, what was it, 943, 943, okay, so there we have, um, let's see what to say about the answer, to the nearest second, okay, so this is, the time is in, Seconds. Okay, so the nearest second. Okay, that's going to give you 161. So that's equal to 161 seconds to the nearest second. So 161 seconds. That's the answer we should give in the end. The time equals 161 seconds. Okay, there we have the answer to question number eight.